Hey everyone, welcome back to another advanced sports analytics application tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing our new MLB projections and optimization tool, our uh, high heat projection system, which can be found in the MLB drop down menu and just navigating to high heat projections. And it'll start up the application. So, the goal with this system and I mean, any kind of similar tool that we build is to create an interface for distributing uh, projections that are run through a, a predictive model that we've put together uh, for DFS contests and uh, in, in really the three main DFS sites, uh, DraftKings, FanDuel, and Yahoo. And the goal is to provide our projections based on some inputs that we've established uh, through uh, just web scraping and kind of maintaining the system. But we also want to create an interactive tool where users can input their own uh, modifications to those inputs that we've provided to uh, really create uh, a set of projections and kind of optimal lineups that are maybe unique to uh, some of uh, some opinions they have about how uh, games might play out or maybe unique to a specific, uh, you know, exposures, I guess, that they want to employ in their lineup builds. So we want to create a tool that, that's kind of functional uh, for, for that customization uh, based on user inputs that can be edited. So when you open the application, you are presented with uh, a selection of the teams that you want to build lineups around. It's going to default to just show all teams playing on a given day. Um, so if you are, you know, playing a specific slate, um, either early or kind of a main evening slate or some sort of micro slate, you can specify the teams you want to consider in your projection pool here. And then you can also select the site that you're playing on uh, and we'll read in those salaries and, uh, you know, scoring, scoring models and uh, you know, the projection model specific to that site that we've constructed. So the first uh, feature that you, are have, that you have access to edit is the forecasted weather for all games. Uh, we, have, we will scrape you know, weather forecasts over the course of the day um, and try to keep those as updated as possible. However, if you wanna edit uh, the weather forecasts kind of manually through forecast that you're seeing elsewhere, you can do so through this tab. Um, and really the, the weather metrics that we're considering are temperature, wind speed, and wind direction. Um, and those do, as I think uh, experienced MLB players know, uh, have impacts on kind of how we can expect uh, DFS outcomes to unfold uh, conditional on those weather factors. And we also have uh, editability for a uh, or two game boosts. So if uh, you want to arbitrarily kind of boost expectation for offense in a given game or pitching in a given game, you can do so here in this column. So this could be, I guess, a good way if, if you want to uh, kind of have your lineup build focus on maybe one specific game, maybe due to advantageous weather uh, conditions that you're projecting, uh, you can do so here. And you can edit any of these columns by just double clicking on the table and you'll open up the editor and you know you can type in like let's say you wanted to positively boost the Boston uh, hitters Boston and Chicago hitters by 10 percent you could do that here and if you wanted to maybe negatively boost pitchers in this game you could do that by like negative five percent uh maybe you want to update the forecast like uh the temperature that we're scraping is maybe not in line with what you're seeing. And uh, you know, you are seeing maybe by the start of game time projecting uh, like, I don't know, even colder weather, like 42 degrees. And they're seeing forecasts, not that wind is blowing at three miles per hour left to right, but blowing six miles per hour out. Um, you can do that here. And you, uh, the application needs kind of the uh, format to be followed with uh, specifying in out right to left and left to right, where the first uh, letter of the string is capitalized and then all else lowercase, so uh, capital out or capital R, uh, right to lowercase left. And then to lock in these modifications on a Mac, as you can see kind of with the little hover, 
you can hit control return uh, to lock and that'll feed these edited values through the projection system. As part of our weather poll, we're also uh, scraping projected lineups, both uh, batting lineups and projected starters. Uh, you know, we'll try to stay as up to date with this as possible and uh, update lineup, uh, you know, changing lineup announcements as they occur. Um, but if you ever want to edit the uh, projected lineups that, that we're showing, uh, you can do so in this tab by again, kind of like double clicking, um, you know, and editing. So um, I don't know, like, uh, let's say, Maybe rather than Starling Castro playing second base, we're thinking like how Kendrick is going to play. And you can also provide boosts here. So like if we wanted to boost Juan Soto by 10%, you can do that here, control enter to lock. Um, or if uh, starting pitchers change over the course of the day and you want to update projections with uh, starting pitchers, uh, you know, let's say rather than Trevor Bauer pitching, uh, there's an announcement that he's scratched and Luis Castillo is going to pitch on short days rest. So you, uh, you know, because he's on short days rest, maybe you want to like negatively boost him 5%. You can do that here by locking. Um, so yeah, that's, a, that's, you know, a way you can edit projected lineups. Uh, you know, you can edit in screen when you're making kind of some of these small changes, but if you're wanting to, uh, you know, really change this, kind of table over uh, in a big way. You know, I think it's actually useful to just download uh, a projected lineups as a CSV and do editing uh, in Excel. So um, A, it's just a good way to save your progress. Like let's say you wanted to edit, you know, the lineup projections at noon and then make changes to that edited lineup uh, closer to lock, you know, you can download in a CSV and kind of save your progress and come back to it. Um, also useful if you are uh, maybe right before lock, you know, you can download like the DraftKings player CSV where they have, uh, you know, this, the lineup designation column and through just some Excel work, you know, you can copy and paste in the exact lineups uh, as being reported by DraftKings and you can do that here in Excel. So, um, you know, let's say we want to, again, do our edit for Howie Kendrick. Let's see, and we boosted one set of 10%. So we could save that. And then upload back into our lineup tab. And we can see Howie Kendrick. Uh, in the lineup, Juan Soto with 10% boost, and we didn't we didn't make the Luis Castillo edit, so it's going to default back to Trevor Bauer as a starter. And uh, you know, projections for pitchers are going to be conditional on projected lineups, and our projected our projections for hitters are going to be conditional on you know projected pitchers. Uh, so editing uh, Luis Castillo in for Trevor Bauer is going to now generate offense projections for all players opposing uh, Luis Castillo. You know, their, their projections are gonna be updated based on the pitching matchup that they're getting and considering handness, uh, you know, I guess both Trevor Bauer and Castillo are right-handed pitchers, but if we were to sub in like a left-handed pitcher for a right-handed pitcher, you know, all this stuff would factor in. There's kind of a trickle down um, effect through the projection. So it's worthwhile, I think, to you know, really make sure you're kind of specifying weather and projected lineups as you would like, uh, you know, ahead of kind of running uh, your optimals. And then we just have a uh, tab with players' projections, their raw projection, uh, as well as their value, which is just a linear function for um, not necessarily fantasy points per dollar, but just a linear function considering projected fantasy points and salary. And if you want to download these projections into a CSV to upload into some other uh, optimization program that you're using, you can download the CSV file and you'll just get the output of players and their uh, you know, projected fantasy points uh, position. 
Looks like the opponent's erring probably due to the at symbol. There must be some sort of CSV confusion there. Um, so we can look into clearing that up. And then uh, positionally, you know, you can view all your position tabs to look at players' uh, projections kind of grouped by position. The C and first base tab just have a, uh, you can either view just sorted by catchers, sorted by first base, or uh, for FanDuel where they have the catcher slash, slash first base position, you can view as a combined table where you're gonna get both first baseman and catcher shown in the same uh, tab. Cool feature I'm really excited about is our stack tab where you can really evaluate teams not as uh, kind of, or where you can evaluate teams as a stack rather than just individual players. Um, the tab starts with this input here on the left where uh, you can choose how you want to prioritize stack size. So it's gonna default to show, uh, it's prioritized by raw FP, but you can also prioritize by value. And what that means is, uh, so like if we were to drop the stack size down to four, uh, prioritizing by raw would extract the top four players in each stack by raw. So it's gonna just choose the four uh, highest scoring, uh, highest projected scoring players and output their projected total and the value of that top four raw stack. Um, but if you wanted to prioritize by value, it's going to grab not the four highest projected players, but the players with the four, uh, with the highest projected value and choose your top four uh, by that and then show what the raw projection output is for uh, you know, that top four value stack. And you can really toy around with the size. Um, you know, even like, even though, you know, FanDuel caps stacking at four, I mean, I do think there's some value to considering like what team is the best, uh, has the best like, stack of six hitters by fantasy points. Um, and then you can generate kind of a mix of stacking options of like, you know, six options choose four or, you know, maybe seven options choose four if you wanted kind of like a wider uh, player pool to build, to build from. Um, but we'll just set, I guess, to four uh, since that's kind of the limit here. And then you can also select which batting slots to consider. So maybe you're just wanting to pull the top four uh, players by, by raw projected uh, by each team. But let's say you wanted to really focus on the top five hitters and like pull four of the top uh, or pull the best four hitters from every team's batting lineup one through five. You could do so here, or maybe conversely, you are wanting to kind of build a contrarian stack where you are fading, uh, wanting to fade like hitters three through five and maybe trying to build like a bottom of the lineup or wraparound type stack. Uh, you could filter that out and, you know, specify which batting, you know, which, uh, which batting slots you want to kind of consider your stack around. Uh, but the app's going to default to just use all, all nine. Uh, batting slots and keep in mind offense uh, I'm sorry National League lineups won't really have a uh, ninth spot because the pitcher can't generate offensive points so uh, like let's say you were doing uh, you know a nine stack build for NL teams you just would only be shown the top eight uh, players and, and you know the nice thing is we'll also output just who those players are. So, you know, if you're building a, wanting to look at a four player stack, we'll show you for Chicago, you know, who the top four projected raw players are in that stack, which I think will be useful in the optimals tab, which is where your optimal lineups are gonna be shown. So uh, continuing with this idea of stacking, in the optimals tab, you know, the base is just going to output optimal lineups, 20 of them and show kind of what the projected uh, you know, totals of that lineup is, sorting by that. Um, you can increase the number of lineups shown through the number of optimals input. 
Uh, you can also lock out uh, or lock in rather and fade certain players. So that's where I think, uh, you know, outputting, like if we just wanted to lock in Encarnacion, uh, Tim Anderson, Moncada, and Abreu, we could do so by inputting them into the locks column. And, you know, if we wanted to like fade the opposing pitcher in that game, so that would be, um, you know, if we wanted to fade, like I think Martin Perez is the Boston pitcher in this hypothetical slate, you know, we could like fade Martin Perez, lock in those four players. Um, if we wanted to be kind of more loose with, um, in our stack building, we could simply just say, doesn't really matter which Chicago White Sox hitters, we just want the four, uh, we wanna build lineups where we lock in a four player Chicago White Sox stack. Um, and you'll see more times than not that probably, well, actually it looks like it's taking out Abreu. And yeah, cause I guess you can't really play Edwin, Encarnacion and Abreu. Um, you know, it's going to input, input uh, Eloy Jimenez there. Um, so you can do that with your primary stack where you specify the team and the size of the stack that you want to consider. And you can also do it with a secondary stack. So like, let's look at which teams have the most kind of value points per dollar two player stack uh, aside from Chicago and see the two player Canna Simeon stack is pretty valuable, but let's say we don't want to necessarily lock in Canna and Simeon because that might kind of restrict our salary elsewhere. Uh, you know, we could just specify that we want uh, to build a secondary Oakland stack with two Oakland players. And sure enough, we will see our lineups now locking in four White Sox hitters and two Oakland hitters and kind of optimizing around those constraints. And if you want to download the set of optimal lineups for kind of bulk upload into uh, DraftKings or FanDuel or, or wherever you're playing. Uh, you can download those with the appropriate player code so that it's ready for uh, MME uh, upload on the site that you're playing on. And lastly is the exposure tab where you can just look at what players, uh, what your player exposure looks like by by player, um, so you know, Mankata, Simeon, and Canna are locked into 100% of our 20 lineup builds, and you know guys like Anderson and Carnacion and Jimenez because of that Chicago White Sox four-team kind of core build are showing up as you know players we have a ton of exposure to. And there's some other guys who are sneaking in here, like Gardner. You know, Shavis is probably getting. I think we still have that. Yeah, Boston uh, hitting boost on there. Uh, so, you know, Chavis is, is getting a nice bump and kind of showing up in a lot of lineups. And then you can see kind of the pitchers are evenly split between Bieber and Strasburg. Um, but yeah, just a good way to uh, check to see kind of how your lineups are looking and, and what players are popping into most of your lineups. And, uh, you know, if you want to maybe gain less exposure to certain players, you could negatively boost them in the projected lineups tab, or if you want to gain more exposure to players, you can boost them up uh, so that they're popping into more of your optimals. Um, yeah, and that's how the app works. Uh, pretty excited to see how this runs uh, in MLB contests. I think there's a lot of functionality here, and we will continue to think about features that we can add to the tool. And if you guys have any suggestions or features you would like to see added, don't hesitate to reach out either on Twitter or email, and we are happy to consider uh, how, how we might be able to work those features into the application.